Hi, so here's a quick video basically showing how someone can replace the um, DC fan on a Corsair-based uh, power supply unit. I recently had an issue with my computer where under extreme graphic loads, I would hear a sort of rumbling noise or a grinding noise. Now, initially I thought this was the fans within the GPU, but given that I can control those, I was not able to confirm that it was caused by GPU fans. Consequently, controlling fan speeds on the CPU, or even the case itself, had no effect in controlling this noise, which leaves the last possible cause, and the one thing you can typically control, uh, fans on power supply units. So here I have a Corsair HX1000, which is a pretty high wattage uh, power supply unit. Because of the high wattage, typically under lower loads, the fan on the power supply won't uh, go on. The only time it typically goes on is under high power demanding loads, so a lot of GPU rendering, or during startup, where it does a brief fan test to make sure that the fan is in fact working. Now, I've already confirmed that the cause is uh, by the fan itself, um, and also not caused by any of the components within the case touching the fan. So I've gone ahead and ordered a uh, old, you know, DC two pin, um, 12 watt, 0 0.22 amp fan. And even though this is only, I believe, 120 millimeters and the fan provided by Corsair's documentation is 135 millimeters, we'll be using uh, little zip ties, potentially, to hold it in place. Now, opening up any power supply unit, regardless of the wattage, is risky. And it's risky because there are capacitors. These capacitors, even after being unplugged, can hold tremendous amounts of charge. And I actually briefly discussed this in my microwave repair video when I was opening up and repairing the microwave. I won't be touching any capacitors and I won't be um, dicking around with any of the electronics, but for the sake of safety, you know, it's always good precaution to wear, you know, insulated gloves, um, rubberized, rubber sole bootings, and anything else that can prevent uh, potential electrical discharge from passing through your body and resulting in quite serious harm. So on that note, uh, what I will do here is I will first disassemble the uh, case shroud of the power supply unit. So that actually includes disassembling the smaller, I believe, um, size two hex bolts. Not these ones, because those connect the fan to the case. I will disassemble it later, but in this next clip, I'll show you after I'm disassembling these four uh, small bolts in all the corners. All right, so I've disassembled the uh, shroud, and before I start with any of the testing, I just want to stress the danger of touching um, an exposed or opened up power supply unit. Don't do this unless you absolutely need to or have a justifiable reason for why you should be doing this. If your power supply unit is covered by warranty, your top priority is to see if you can potentially get that RMA. Um, it really isn't worth, you know, digging around with this stuff if you're not accustomed to working with high voltage electronics. Even myself, I'm not that experienced, so I strongly advise any other possible solution um, in terms of power supply repair that doesn't warrant you having to open it up yourself. Consequently, it, I believe it damages or it invalidates any warranty you do currently have if you attempt to open up a power supply unit. With that out of the way, um, I'll quickly show you an example of the issue I'm having. Um, so what we can do right now is I'll flip the switch on this power supply unit and if you look over here I have the motherboard um, ATX connector to the power supply unit with what appears to be a Swiss Army knife lodged in the uh, outputs. Now I believe um, the fourth and fifth pin from the top left corner of the power supply unit are actually uh, can be used as the PSU jumper. And this isn't something I'm making up or randomly guessing. This is actually a recommended test it um, on Corsair's website for testing power supply units. If you do not have a Corsair power supply unit or you have a completely different model, 
or even if you're intending to open up a power supply unit, I always recommend checking the manufacturer's websites to see if they have any ways you can safely test this um, at home. Um, that being said, uh, let's flip the switch and hopefully demonstrate the noise that the power supply fan is making. So I will flip the switch and real quickly. So that might have been harder to hear, um, but what appears to be happening is that the ball bearings that the fans are resting on or whatever anti-friction mechanism is in place is causing vibrations. And these vibrations weren't, or might not have sounded as loud in the recording, but that's because I have the case off and the PSU is not bolted into anything. When the power supply was in my system and it was directly bolted into the case itself, the entire case would vibrate and that produced a relatively loud and alarming noise. You don't want to ignore noises from your PSU's fan um, because if the fan fails under high load, there's not really telling what will happen. Um, any one of these components can overheat and that can lead to disastrous effects. Consequently, um, if you had something important that you were running, such as an overnight render, or you just had some really important documents open on your computer that weren't saved, the best case scenario is that your PSU would simply shut down and you would lose any unsafe work. The worst case scenario is that there would be some kind of short that fries a lot of your internal motherboards or GPU or CPU or any other components. Now, most high-end power supply units have safeguards in place that can prevent this, but again, nothing's perfect. So on that note, because we've confirmed that it is in fact the fan itself, and it's not the fan rubbing in on any of these internal components, we will uh, attempt to replace it. So one thing to note is that this particular fan requires a 12 volt uh, two pin DC that operates at 0.22 amps. I got a fan here that is 12 volts, 0.25 amps, uh, but it's also a two pin DC fan. What I will do is I will make sure that the uh, positive and negative terminals shown here are in fact what should be the positive and negative terminals here. I believe there is a convention for red colored wires to represent one terminal and black colored wires, wire, black colored wire, wires sorry, to represent another terminal. Um, but I will quickly confirm this on the manufacturer's website because Again, you never know, just because something's a standard doesn't mean all uh, manufacturers will unequivocally implement this. So on that note, I will pause recording and pick up um, potentially after I've swapped out the fan. All right, so as you can unfortunately see, I've connected the, uh, I wanna say 120 millimeter fan uh, to where the 135 millimeter fan once was. Now, I hope this would have been a relatively easy endeavor, um, but as you might have guessed, you know, using different sized fans in different sized enclosures will always lead to problems, as evident by the plethora of zip ties I actually had to use. Now, don't worry, the zip ties will be trimmed um, as, the, as I finalize the product. Um, but here I just wanted to verify that, in fact, the fan does work when I power it on and I have the jumpers in the uh, top third and fourth uh, positions from the top left corner in this uh, Corsair ATX PSU. So on that note, our goal here is to basically make sure that the fan, um, well, is able to rotate and if it does rotate, it is not impacted by any of the cables or zip ties used here. Most of zip, zip tying work actually faces on the outside um, because I didn't want any of the zip ties potentially touching these components. Now, one of the reason Corsair, uh, the high end, you know, thousand HX power supply units are able to have this low noise operation is of these uh, heat sinks. They allow uh, dissipation of any heat generated under low load conditions, but consequently, many of these heat sinks might be 
reasonably warm. How warm they are, I'm not sure, but I don't want any of my cables to start touching them because if they do in fact melt, well, this can lead to a potential fire hazard. Um, that being said, I strongly, strongly recommend against uh, opening up power supply units, uh, especially high voltage ones like this one. But if you absolutely need to, this is a solution I have. So on that note, let's uh, verify that we have the um, jumper in place, which we do. And now let's turn it on. Fan spins up. Dead silent, which is great. And now the fan is spinning down. So I'm hoping that the audio captured here will show a stark difference in the amount of noise that this power supply now produces, which is none. Um, so on that note, I will trim these uh, wires or these um, zip ties. And I also want to make a note of what it says over here. If you can kind of see, not only does uh, are the wires color coded for the two pin 12 volt uh, DC fan cables, but there's also a plus and a minus just to further verify that you are in fact plugging the correct terminals and the correct sockets. Um, the fan provider that I'll link in the description of this video has them in the correct order and has a schematic demonstrating which is the positive and negative terminal. Um, but again, always good practice just to make sure and be 100% safe. Um, again, especially with working with the power supply unit. So on that note, I will reassemble the PSU and post one last video demonstrating how it looks as a finished product. All right, so there we have it, the fully assembled um, HX1000 power supply unit with the 120 millimeter fan. Now, you can, and in fact, you're recommended to use 135 or even 140 millimeter fans. The only reason I had a 120 millimeter fan was, well, that's the only thing I could find on Amazon that was able to ship uh, within a reasonable time frame. Because keep in mind, there's several other criteria or several other factors you should keep in mind when choosing a compatible fan. Not only do you need to use one with a comparable size, but you also want to make sure it's two pin DC. Um, so unfortunately, a lot of Noctua, which is a high end fan manufacturer, uh, their fans usually have three or four pins. Um, and typically higher end fans are also pulse width modulated, so PWM, as opposed to controlled simply by variations in the DC voltage. Um, potentially, I'm sure you could find some kind of adapter online um, that converts four pins to uh, two pin DC. But again, that would defeat the purpose of having a pulse width modulated uh, fan. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is <clears throat> try and get the voltages as close and as similar as possible. I'm not 100% sure what will happen if you go over the voltage limits or over the current limits. Um, in this case, I believe the fan I installed was like 0.25 amps. And to me, this is comparable or more or less safe for a uh, fan that's rated for 0.22 amps. Um, I've heard of cases where people use buck converters to downstep the 24 volt fans into something like 12 volts. But again, better to keep it as simple and straightforward as possible. So on that note, um, let's quickly take a look at the fan and see how it spins up. So. Yeah, as you can see, it's uh, pretty much inaudible, um, which is the desired intent. So a couple other things to note. Um, when you reassemble the case, hmm, that was uh, me bumping into the table. When you reassemble the case, you want to make sure that none of the components underneath the fan are actually rubbing onto the flan fan blade. So I actually used one zip tie, which is kind of hard to see over here, but that holds uh, some of the cabling from the uh, fan headers or fan terminals, fan wires, whatever you want to call them. 
and so it holds those in place just because I didn't want it dangling around and potentially melting on some component that generally gets hotter than it should be. Um, I also had these uh, zip ties run down the socket through the uh, fan holes up through another set of fan holes and out the final casing socket and I used two zip ties to basically secure them to one another. I wanted to minimize the amount of cabling that was required to hold the fan in place inside of the fan, again because I want to avoid things from touching the fan. Um, the same was also repeated for the top two sockets of the fan. As for the middle, uh, we have this weird looking zip tie that actually goes above and below several of the rungs of the um, fan grate. Now I opted to use the initial or original Noctua fan grate, uh, not Noctua, uh, Corsair fan grate, um, just because I didn't want to muck around the PSU too much. And you can see like as I'm rubbing it, it's not shifting around or moving that much um, because as the fan spins up, it'll basically transduce any vibrations through the uh, fan shroud. Uh, or the fan grate, and I didn't want that to be the case. If you want a silent fan, not only do you have to make sure that the fan itself is not loud, but you don't want any of the components shaking or rattling around when under load. Now this power supply unit is going to make its way into a network attached storage, and for those of you who don't know, network, network attached storages typically don't use a lot of power. In fact, a 1000 watt power supply unit is a bit overkill for something that's powering, you know, eight um, uh, 3.5 inch hard drives and a couple of four inch or uh, 2.5 inch uh, solid state drives. Um, but because I might want to use this um, NAS, well, running TrueNAS system, uh, for virtual machines, there's not a lot of harm in, you know, running a 1000 watt power supply unit. In fact, you can run any power supply unit over what's recommended, and there isn't really anything wrong that would happen. Um, yeah, so on that note, this is how, or this is a video recording demonstrating how someone can replace uh, a noisy or loud, you know, fan in one of Corsair power supply units. Assuming they've exhausted all other options such as warranty, um, or even taking it to your local compare, uh, computer repair shop and seeing if they can do anything about it. Again, I strongly, strongly, strongly advise this to be a last resort um, unless you just don't have the money or you really need something repaired quickly and you can't afford any downtime. Use this as a last resort for repairing your power supply unit. But as a general rule of thumb, just don't open a power supply unit. It's not worth it. Um, I had relatively, you know, straightforward experience in doing it here. You might have a completely different story. You might end up shorting something. Um, and again, nothing shown in this video. I don't want to be held liable for anything. It's so used at your own risk. Um, and, you know, even if it works, as shown here, there's no guarantee that, you know, five or six years from now, uh, something might fail, a zip tie might come loose, the fan assembly comes, you know, crashing down into the components itself. I might be a little bit melodramatic here, and worst case scenario, you're just gonna have a system power outage um, because your power supply unit overheats and there's likely some uh, internal component um, that'll shut off if the power supply gets too hot. So, you know, it's, it's a bit of a catch-22 you can repair it yourself, save a couple of hundred bucks for a high-end power supply unit, assuming it's not under warranty. Um, but again, you have no, I have no idea what's gonna happen. It's not like this particular repair method has been tested as extensively as Corsair has tested uh, each of the other components within the power supply unit. So again, I say use it at your own risk. That being said, I hope this video was informative. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to let me know. Um, and if you like seeing this kind of stuff, you know, let me know. And I'm more than happy to show how I repair a bunch of different components uh, that have given me headaches, you know, over the past uh, half a decade or so that I've been uh, building and repairing computers. 
Anyways, thanks for watching.